Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of 1 John. This is not the Gospel of John, this is 1 John. It's a little book in the very back of the New Testament. And this is what it says. We write you now about what has always existed, which we have heard. We have seen with our own eyes. We have looked at, we have touched with our hands. We write to you about the word that gives life. He who gives life was shown to us. We saw him and can give proof about it. And now we announce to you that he has life that continues forever. He was with God the Father and was shown to us. We announce to you that we have seen and heard because we want you also to have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with God the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to you so that you can be full of joy with us. Here's the message we have heard from Christ and now announce to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So if we say we have fellowship with God but we continue living in darkness, we are liars and do not follow the truth. But if we live in the light as God is in the light, we can share fellowship with each other. Then the blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we're fooling ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, He will forgive our sin, because we can trust God to do what is right. He will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. If we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar, and we do not accept God's teaching. My dear children, I write this letter to you so you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have a helper in the presence of the Father, Jesus Christ, the one who does what is right. He is the way our sins are taken away, and not only our sin, but the sins of all people. Pray with me. Jesus, you are life. And this day, may we experience life, your life, living through us and in us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. In 1947, Vladimir Zinchenkov was a government accounting clerk in post-war Russia. Post-war Russia, it was a hard place to live. Ration cards were necessary to buy anything. And because they were necessary, people valued them highly. Well, after a long night of drinking, Vladimir Zinchenkov came home to discover that he had misplaced 400 of his boss's rationing cards. Well, he knew there was no way to talk his way out of this, that the chances were very high that he would be arrested when he was discovered and he would be sent off to Siberia to live out the rest of his days there. That's when his wife hatched a plan. She said, hide, hide in the house, and I'll tell people that you ran off with another woman. So that's what he did. He hid for 22 years, never leaving his house, not one time, until 1969 when his wife died. He came out of hiding, he went to the police station, and he gave himself up. 
He told the police that he, what, he wasn't sure what happened, that he had misplaced 400 of the rationing cards that belonged to his boss. They told him that wasn't a problem at all, that the day after he disappeared, they found the 400 rationing cards in his desk. Wow. Fear does some amazing things to us. And after this year, I don't think, I think each one of us could preach our own sermons about what fear has done to us. Hunker down. Hide. Go away from, from other folks. Some of the times the, the, real, the, the fear is very real. Other times, it's a, it's a diet of, of eating fear day in and day out that has its, its effect on us. What was going on right here in this letter of John is that the people were living in fear. That John is preaching to the churches in Ephesus and Asia Minor, and they're fearful because they're, they're is a group of false teachers going around telling folks that this whole thing about Jesus, that's not the important part. The important part is us and them. The us, well, we're spiritual beings. We have a special knowledge that other folks just don't have. And listen to us. And there's them, those are the people, well, they are not spiritual beings. They're just animals. And a part of being a spiritual being is that our bodies they really don't matter. That if you want to treat your body as a playground, treat it as a playground. If you want to treat it as a demolition field, just go ahead. That your body doesn't make any difference. That's what they were teaching. And so people were hiding from one another. They were split up, us and them. They were deciding who were the, the spiritual and who were the animal. And it was splitting the churches. Because fear does that. That's what fear does. It separates us one from each other, and it, it does its best to separate us from God. It does its best to get us to hunker down. And here, here, the Apostle John is calling people out of hiding. We can either hunker down or we can lighten up. And that's what he calls us to do is to live in the light, to, to lighten up. And that's what I want to talk about this morning is lighten up. To live in the light. Come out of the, the hunkering down. And the first thing that I want to talk about this morning is lighten up and live in fellowship with Jesus. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. We read it this morning. It says, We announce to you that what we have seen and heard, because we want you to have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with God the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to you so that you can be full of joy with us. Fellowship. Fellowship. It's a word we use fairly often. It used to be there was a time, I don't know if you remember it or not, where we had this thing, and it was called shaking hands. Yep. And it, you might not have known this, but that, it came from a primitive practice. It used to be that, that men would have weapons in their right hand. And to show that they had no weapon and they wanted to live in peace, they would either show their hand or extend their hand. And over the centuries, it became a way of greeting one another. It's one of those ways of greeting that was curtailed during the pandemic. Even in churches, we call extending the right hand of fellowship is what we called it. Now, that word fellowship, I don't, we don't use it a lot of places. But the word in Greek, well, if, if you could only learn three words in Greek, this is, this is one of them. There's a, the word feta. It means cheese in Greek. And I advise you avoid it at all cost. It, mm -mm. Second word that's a Greek word is baklava. It's a, a dessert that's full of delicious goodness. And I advise that you try it at all cost. It's wonderful. The third word is this word right here. For fellowship, it's koinonia. You may have heard that word before. Koinonia. It's a very important word in what God does in and through us. That the Apostle John is advising these folks to lighten up in fellowship with one another. But the, 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 the really important thing is fellowship with God the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. 
That's the important part. Because koinonia, the word means to share in common. And what we share in common is Jesus Christ. That's what we share with other Christians. It's not an idea. It's not an ethic. It's not a morality. What we share in common is Jesus Christ. And it's Jesus is the one that empowers us. It's Jesus is the one that, that, that remakes and forms fellowship where two or more are gathered is the way that Jesus put it, that he's there in our midst. The way the Apostle Paul puts it is that he joins our spirit with his spirit. And we call out, Abba, Father, that we're children of God and that we belong to him. During World War II, the Japanese were doing research to find the best way to extract information from prisoners. And they discovered that solitary confinement was by far the best way. That nearly every single person, if they were kept in solitary confinement alone, that almost every single one of them would break. That it's when we're alone that our weakness is discovered to temptation. It's our weakness is shown to discouragement and, yes, to fear. And what the apostle John is calling the church to is to a fellowship, a strength in Jesus Christ where we, we meet with Him to lighten up, meet with Jesus, meet with one another. It'll transform, it'll transform a life. Second thing that I want to talk about this morning is lighten up and live in forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Live in forgiveness through Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, this is what it says. John says, if we say we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he will forgive our sin because we can trust God to do what is right. He will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. Years ago, a friend asked me if I wanted to go to a lecture that was given by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Well, Rabbi Harold Kushner has written several books. The one he's most well known for is When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Well, went there with my friend, and, and Rabbi Kushner was talking about research that he was doing for his next book. And that he discovered that in studying cultures throughout history, and studying tribes throughout history, and civilizations throughout history, that there was a, a common theme that ran through them, that each culture, each tribe, each civilization would develop for itself a code, a code of ethics that he used the illustration that even thieves have a code. You may have heard the expression honor among thieves. It means it's okay to steal from anybody, but the one thing that a thief doesn't do is a thief doesn't steal from another thief. That even in that, that group, there, there's a code. And they discovered that even in prison, that you could rape, pillage, plunder, you could kill, destroy, do whatever you wanted, but the, the code was that you don't hurt children. That we're all searching for a code of ethics to find an excuse to keep doing what we're doing, an excuse to hunker down and remain unchanged. I know for a long time when I was a kid, I tried to do to do good. Tried real hard to do the right thing. Tried to do better and then when I didn't do it, I'd try harder still. And when I grew a little older, I, when I began to fail, I, I realized that I was, had developed my own code. And my own code was not to compare myself to any standard. It was just to be better than someone else. That I wasn't so bad as long as I wasn't as bad as the worst person out there. Life in Jesus Christ begins where the excuses stop. And they stop at the cross. That what Jesus did on the cross was necessary 
for you, for me, for every culture, every code, every tribe, that there's no excuse. The way Isaiah 53, 6 puts it, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his way, his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He's taken those excuses. He's taken the fear. He's taken the self-rationalizations. He's taken the sin, and he's taken it on himself. And when he nailed it to the cross, he took away its power once and for all. When we make excuses, we do nothing but live under its power. There's not a verse in the Bible that's more clear than it is right here. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. Not just the lightweight sins, but all sins. And we can trust Him. We can trust Him to do what is right, that He'll cleanse us from all the wrongs that we have done. Not some of the wrongs, but all the wrongs. That's what Jesus did on the cross for you and me. An ethic can't do that. A morality can't do that. A good idea can't do that. But Jesus Christ did. Live in the light. Lighten up. Lighten up. This morning I want to encourage you to lighten up and live in the forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is I want to encourage you to lighten up and live in faith in Jesus Christ. Dr. Christian Barnard was the first person ever to successfully perform a, a human heart transplant. He was talking to one of his patients one day when the patient asked if he could see his old heart. Well, Dr. Barnard brought the old heart to him in formaldehyde in a jar where he could see the old worn-out heart. And as the patient was looking at the heart that, that was dying within him and that, that Dr. Barnard had, had replaced, it hit Dr. Barnard that this was the first time ever in history that anyone had ever looked at their own heart. And that's when the patient said, I'm glad I don't have that old heart anymore. That's life. The life that Jesus offers to you and to me. A new creation. A new heart. A new birth. Living on the inside of us. Not one day, but this day. It can't be offered by an idea or an ethic or a morality. It's offered by the risen Christ alive in you and in me. William Temple once said, It's no good giving me a play like Hamlet or King Lear and telling me to write a play like that. Shakespeare could do it, but I can't. And it's no good showing me a life like the life of Jesus and telling me to live a life like that. Jesus could do it, but I can't. But if the genius of Shakespeare could come and live in me, then I could write plays like that. And if the spirit of Jesus could come and live in me, then I could live a life like that. I have good news. The spirit of Jesus did come to live in you and me. So we could live a life, a life like His, a life transformed, a life with a new heart, a new spirit. And it's available to all who will receive it. This morning, it may be that you haven't trusted Jesus. You haven't leaned on Him. You haven't relied on what He has done. Or maybe that you've never asked Him for a new heart, a new creation new life. This morning I want to offer that opportunity to you. Because that's how His joy may be made full in you and me. Yes, through fellowship with Him. Every day where two or more are gathered, that, that koinonia, where we have Jesus Christ in common with others in His life living through us. It's a new life where it's offered by a a life in, where forgiveness lives in and through us, where we don't 
live hunkered down, trying to make excuses, or drowning in guilt or shame. It's a new life where we lean on Him, where we trust Him, and we walk in the light. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, this day, breathe on us the power of Your Spirit, the risen Christ, to live in us, not like an idea, not like an ethic or morality, but the risen Christ that has power to give a new heart a new birth, a new life, a new creation inside this old creation. Jesus, there may be those this morning that have never, never trusted that you really could do that. This day, this day, may it be a new day that you take away that old sin, that old heart, those old excuses and that you begin to live in us brand new, fresh this day. And maybe that the, those today that maybe the pandemic has called them, caused them to, to pull back in fear, in fear of, of sharing with other Christians, with other people. And instead of has caused folks to, to hunker down. You have strength we don't have. Strength, power to live a life that has joy in you and to share what we have in common. That's you, Jesus. Use this day to be the first step. You often spoke of kingdom is a seed something small that's planted and begins to grow start that growth this day start it now it's in Christ's name we pray amen thanks again for joining us today um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.